Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Aditya here. Today, we are going to explore how caching works in AWS API Gateway and why it's a powerful feature to optimize your API's performance. We will also cover cache invalidations, which is a crucial for maintaining accuracy of your cache data. Let's dive right in. First off, Let's talk about why caching is important. Caching reduces the number of calls made to the backend, right, by storing responses for a specified amount of time. This is not only improves the speed of your API, but also reduces the load on the backend services. So that was the advantage of using caching. Okay, so here are the some key features you need to know about API gateways caching. So with respect to API Gateway, see these key features. The first one is the default TTL. So here TTL means time to live for cached responses is 300 seconds. And you can configure this from as low as 0 to a maximum value of 3600 seconds. And the second point is caches are defined per stage. So, which means you can have different cache settings for different environments. For example, you have development stays, testing stays, and production stays. Each these three different stages will have different caching settings. So you can set different cache settings for three different environments. And you can also override cache settings per method. It's not only state specific, you can know dig deeper into this method levels for each method you can override the cache settings so that you will get a finer control over what's get cached for how long right that final control we will get by this option and finally you can do cache encryption also right adding extra layer of security for your cache data and the capacity of this caches usually ranges from 0.5 GB, that means half GB to 237 GB of data. So you can scale it based on your needs. And keep in mind that caching can be expensive. Okay, it's typically worth the cost in production environments, but may not be necessarily in development stages or testing stages. So keep in mind that and don't put caching in your development and testing stages and use it in production because it's worth right so this is the key features of aws api gateway providing to caching mechanism okay or this is the key features aws api's gateway okay now moving on to the next point that is how api gateway caching works so we'll see how the internals of the api gateway caching okay so here how it works when a client makes an request right api gateway first checks the cache and if the requested data is found in the cache right that is called cache hit it's written immediately without querying the backend and if the data isn't in the cache that is called cache mesh then api gateway forwards the request to the backend and backend retrieves the data and then stores it in cache and send it to the customer or client and use that cache for the future use and it will reduce or this setup significantly reduces latency and backend load obviously two things it reduces the latency and also it reduces the load on the backend so that was the beauty of caching and for better understanding see this flow diagram you have a client and your client is requesting or using api gateway right and he can able to access the cache like this. So API Gateway, if you enable caching, first it will check for the cache only. And if the cache has response, the response has sent back to the API Gateway and, a and API Gateway will send that response back to the client. And, and if the cache don't have that response handy, then what it will do is it will forward that request to the backend. So that is called cache miss. And if the cache is missed and backend will again process and send back that response to the 
cache and it will be stored in the cache before sending to the API gateway and API gateway will again send back to the response and again the client made the same request this time it won't go to the cache mesh because you have already cached the request right that response will be sent back to the client so that it reduces the latency and back in load okay so i hope you understand how caching works here in api gateway and its features in api gateway now moving on to the next topic that is api gateway cache invalidation okay now let's discuss cache invalidation a critical aspect of caching okay so api gateway allows you to flush the entire cache at any time effectively invalidating all stored data that means you can invalidate all the stored data immediately okay even one more advantage is clients can also invalidate the cache by sending a request with header the header should contain this cache control key with max is zero then it will invalidate invalidate all the cache from the client send itself right but in order to do that right however this requests proper iam authorization to ensure that only authorized clients can perform this action so not everyone go and invalidate the cache right then that means even though your cache is there every time the client is invalidating so that your backend load is have more now right because it has to invalidate the cache and then it has to hit the backend so it will take more time so latency will be higher so if you didn't provide proper I iam authorization if you didn't provide the authorization aspect here then definitely it will fail so do remember this thing and if you don't set up an invalidated cache policy or authorization any client can invalidate the cache okay and this can lead to unauthorized cache invalidations and which could degrade your api performance the same point what we have discussed earlier if you didn't provide this iam authorization or invalidated cache policy to your api gateway and the unauthorized clients also tries to invalidate the cache and this will lead your api to degrade its performance okay so in summary i can say caching is very powerful feature in api gateway that can greatly improve your aps performance and reduce backend load however it's important to manage it carefully especially when it comes to cache invalidation to ensure your data remains accurate and your api performs optimally okay so with respect to cache invalidation please be ensure carefully manage that okay and obviously you have to monitor cache usages and performance to adjust the time to live on capacity settings as needed so first you monitor your cache your application and set your ttls accordingly thanks for watching if you found this video helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more aws insights tips and tricks so until now we have seen how to use caching in aws api gateway in theoretical way now or in theory now we are going to dive in the hands on section and see how to enable caching in aws api gateway so for that i am again creating an api from the scratch so i have opened my amazon api gateway service from the console and after that i am going to build a rest api so click on build here and here i am going to create a new api and i am going to give my name as my caching api okay so after that click on create api button so once you click once you clicked on the create api button it will create api like this and we all know and by default we will get one resource called slash okay so we got a resource already created but we need a method so it's not like you need a method you can create an another resource also so we'll create another resource first so click on create resource and i am here i'm giving name to my resources test cache okay and create resource so my resource got created and for every resource right under it we need methods 
so for that we'll create a method and method creation where you can able to enable your caching that is method level caching so here we are simply creating a method we are not going to add caching now right here simply go to the method type and select get and back end we'll use as usual lambda with lambda proxy integration and select any existing lambda here so i'm selecting this existing lambda and if you see here right you have method request settings and different settings just leave about it and click on create method so this will create a method get method under your slash test cache okay so we'll do one thing we'll test it quickly so go to test and click on this test button and you will get this response everything is good now and we'll deploy this api so click on this deploy api button and after that you will get this page and here you need to select a stage since this is a new api we don't have any stages available here so create a new stage click on new stage and give the stage name as test or cache whatever you want and click on deploy my new stage getting deployed and after that once the stage is created you can able to see here i have slash test cache so at the stage level right i can able to edit few things so here in the stage details if you observe we have few uh, few things like case cluster that is inactive and default method level caching that is also inactive so if i click here edit and in this configurations you can able to add the caching also look i think we have already discovered or we have already covered this if you remember when i'm explaining about stage configurations and here in the additional settings you can able to see the cache settings you have two types of cache settings here one is you can provision api cache right so this capability for your stays caching is not active until you enable the method level cache so for each method you have to enable the cache so if i enable the cache here in this particular api level cache stage level cache right here i can able to mention the capacity so as i mentioned here right you can enable the cache capacity from half gb to 237 gb so you can select whatever you want and as an extra security layer you can able to encrypt that caching also right and even the default cache time to live ttl is 300 seconds but you can configure it up to 3600 seconds also and here you have the cache invalidation as we discussed in the theory part the invalidation is very uh, very essential or crucial and you have to manage that very carefully here right if you leave this turned off then any client if you leave this turned off any client can able to invalidate your cache but in order to provide final control only authorized users only able to delete your invalidation or cache or invalidate your cache or delete your cache then you have to enable this option and once you enable it you can do few things right ignore cache control header for example an unauthorized user accessing your api and you enabled your caching and that user sent or that client sent you request with cache invalidation header so instead of invalidating cache what we will do is we will ignore them we will still use cache and we'll send response back to them and right ignore cache control header add a warning in response header so definitely we will add response to them you don't you don't have that authorization or even you can fail them also by sending 403 status code so we'll use ignore cache header and you can set your throttling limits right i think if you want to use your api for the actual clients right and you want to set your hitting limit of your api to specific number of hits then you can specify those things here but yeah that is out of scope of this concept now with respect to caching we have covered how to enable the cache here and also how to enable invalidation cache invalidation authorization okay so here once you selected all these details click on save but if you are following along with me just remember cache capacity will incur costs so you have to revert it very quickly so i am saving it so i have enabled caching at the stage level right and we know how to enable caching at the stage level how to enable 
cache invalidation good we are good with that now if i go to a particular method for example slash test cache is my resource in that resource i have a method called get if you observe this method right this method is not enabled caching so previously if we see we have enabled cache at stage level but at the method level also we have to enable the caching then only caching will work for each method so for that we have to click on create override in the create override if you scroll down below right you can able to see enable method cache so if you enable the method cache right and it will come up with the previous stage level caching options then only the caching will be applicable to this method and save it so once you saved it and copy this url and go to browser and hit this url you can able to get a response that is version 2 and the second time you will get the response but that is not hitting the backend this is the cached response but anyway there is no way to test how the caching works right whether it's coming from the cache or not for this simple api but yeah since we enable the caching it will come from the caching only okay so you can enable method level caching or stage level caching and this stage level caching will be enabled for the all the methods it seems and i think by mistake i said it won't uh, you have to enable it but what if you enable it stage level then method level you don't need to enable it it seems we'll do one thing we'll turn off the caching and throttling save here at the stage level so stage level i turned off the caching and coming to the method level now the get method so look caching is not active until you provision a cache cluster for your stage so that means you have to enable stage level and after that for each method you have to enable method level caching then only the caching will works yeah whatever my understanding is correct so to uh, prove that i just do this and yeah that's it so i hope you understand how to enable cache how to enable that uh, cache invalidation option in the api gateway so thanks for watching if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and share and hit the notification bell icon for more aws insights tips and tricks see you in the next video bye